Hey there, you guys. Welcome to Real Estate Divas, and today we're going to be talking about how to get started in Airbnbs. We've got a whole series on this, so be sure and come right back. Hello, today on Real Estate Divas, we are going to be talking about how to get started with your first Airbnb. I'm Kristen Gerst with Capricorn Mortgage, and I'm here with the lovely Jay Lee Thompson with Texel Real Estate and Real Estate Reformation. So the first part, everybody wants to know, well, how do you go about picking one? Yeah, the getting started is, I, I get that question a lot as well, is, well, I mean, can any house qualify? I mean, technically, yes, but that's not how you want to start your search. Yeah, technically, yes. That doesn't mean that every house should be an Airbnb. Exactly. <laughs> So choosing it, you're trying to decide on one, what's your area, when you're probably your first Airbnb, let's just be clear here, obviously there's companies out there that have Airbnbs all over the place, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, and so you can have them wherever you want, but probably your first one, you want it to be local, kind of like your first flip. And so pick something local, what is your locale? Are you near the slopes? Are you, you know? Right, because you do a lot of real estate in Colorado. So if you are in a ski town, obviously you're going to treat that Airbnb differently or at least plan during the year to be booked differently than you would say in Dallas or in New York City or you know any me metropolitan area. So yeah, you gotta know what type you're looking for. Is it urban? Are there attractions? What type of attractions? Yeah, it, you want to know that stuff because those are the things you're going to be featuring. Those are the things you're going to be grabbing those those people that are looking for that type of entertainment. You know, that's the reason they're going to come here and be in your Airbnb. Right. So I think the number one thing is don't be in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Unless that's your niche. <laughs> if your niche is I'm in the middle of nowhere and this is relaxing and, and we're going to do all, you know, and you can hunt and you can fish. That's totally different. But for the most part, most Airbnbs are going to be in a metropolitan area or near some sort of right. attraction. Right. So and, and know that where there are more people coming to visit, you're going to have a higher amount of traffic. You're going to be able to charge more. Your revenue is going to be higher. So yes. Yeah. So anyways, decide where you're going to do it in, in what city. Typically not the middle of nowhere, unless, you know, there are people who go out and you can Airbnb a tent. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere. But again, that's usually you're advertising on different sites and know that. And then you need to decide how high end you're going. Well, and like we talked in one of our previous episodes of, you know, being, figuring out what tier you're going to be because there are different tiers, you know, just like whenever you're looking for a place to buy, there's different neighborhoods to buy in, um, the different tiers. Well, and so like, the, and it was quite funny, the photographer today, because I had two Airbnbs photographed and one is super high end, every amenity, um, and then the next one yeah, it has a swimming pool and it's got the gas fire pit because, you know, that's what I always put in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the decor was signature, looked like something I designed. You know, it definitely had that same feel to it. But the base, like the rehab on this thing is awful. <laughs> and I just said, I'm like, don't look too closely at everything. It's pretty bad. And I'm like, I didn't, you know, I didn't rehab this thing. I kind of yeah, just yeah. got it like this. Got it. And then and I'm just, we're I making go, do. And I go, do not photograph the bathrooms. The bathrooms are horrid. And <laughs> she looked at me, she goes, I've seen a lot worse. And so she yeah. photographs Airbnbs for a living. And she goes, you'd be shocked at what? some people are renting out. And I just had to laugh because I'm like, this is what I keep saying. I'm like, people are making a killing a killing on renting things that haven't been rehabbed are actually kind of gross. Well, I mean, like we said, when economy, and we showed pictures, you yeah. know, on one of our past episodes, please look it up, you know, go, there's a whole series here. Um, but one of the other episodes we showed, here's the economy, you know, and here's something that's standard, here's something that's luxury. So there's a, there's a definite difference, just like whenever you're dealing with a hotel, you know, if you're going to a <laughs> roadside <laughs> travel lodge, 
um, that's stuck in the 70s or the 60s or 70s is going to be a much different experience than staying at the Hyatt. So yes. every time I drive by one of those, I'm like, oof. <laughs> See, and I have the different, uh, my, uh, my reaction is, oh my gosh, I'd love to get my hands on one of those oh. and totally like make it funky. Oh, yes. Like I love the way they look. Like I would totally like to do that. But when you're driving by and it looks a little mm, shady, a little yeah. shady, little sketch. Yeah. It's always somebody loitering about. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, you know, you got to get familiar with what you've got and be realistic about it. Yep. You know, you know, of the two properties that I'm, you know, photographed today. One is a four bedroom, one is a five bedroom, but they are going to be drastically different in price just because of size and finish out, you know. And the location isn't that much different, right? They are three minutes apart. Exactly. So, I mean, they're basically the same neighborhood. Well, it's not the same neighborhood, but basically the same quadrant mm -hmm. of town, but it's just apples to oranges when you look exactly. at it. And I'm, you just can't charge as much for that one. Absolutely. And so having, being realistic about what you have is going to go a long way. So it takes us to the next step to figure out how much to price this thing at. Well, uh, you know, before we jump into the how much to price this, what can you afford when you're talking about Airbnb? You know, because it's going to be the same amount of work um, and possibly more work if you're going for economy because you're going to have people coming in there. They're going to want to throw parties. They're going to want to, you know, they may tear it up a little bit more than somebody who is paying more, has a has a bigger deposit, staying at a nicer place. That doesn't alleviate all problems, mm -hmm. but there you might alleviate some if you go just a little. If you can afford it, then buy something just a little bit more well and, and a lot of it is you know the one i stepped in was had been managed previously by another manager of this second property that i got photographed today and i just kept trying to work with what they had mm -hmm. but it looked like a garage sale yep and and i finally just told them i'm like this needs help i'm yep. like i can leave the basics here but i'm like we need to like change revamp around. we need to and revamp <laughs> i'm like because it, it looks like a garage sale and he goes yeah that's where I think they got most of the items and I'm like all right so I shouldn't feel you too can bad. still sharp <laughs> like not saying you can't bargain shop there's stuff on Facebook marketplace and stuff but I mean it, use some common sense you there don't want two, it to look like in the living room there were two floor lamps that were not only didn't match were completely different styles and, yeah and I'm like what what why do we have this? Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't look Just good. a quick peruse through Pinterest. I, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just, I like that. Like I, a start a folder. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is a room that I like. Yeah. Go in and try to recreate that room. Yeah. But if yeah. you go hodgepodge and just it's throw gonna random look like it. stuff it's in there, like it, it is. So, so you're right. Spend a little extra time, kind of class it up. You'll be able to get more money for that. Absolutely. So when you're doing research on pricing, like it's, I know from doing comps and things like that, when you're, you know, whether it's rentals or it's, it's uh, for resale, you know, we have the MLS, we can pull that pretty quickly as a realtor. But whenever you're doing Airbnb, it's a, there's a little bit different nuances that you've got to consider. Right. So everybody prices for the weekdays and they price for the weekends. Mm -hmm. If you go and you just look at the little dots and those prices, that's the average of every available booking day. Gotcha. So you can't look at that and go, because some properties might get rented more, some properties might get rented less. Some uh, properties, they don't, I mean, especially if they live there and rent it, they don't rent it all at all during the week, or they only rent it on holidays or right. a special, you right. know. So you're not going to be able to tell. Yeah. Uh, so what you do is you go and you, act like you're going to do your own reservation. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to reserve this for Friday and Saturday night and just find the first Friday and Saturday night you can. Mm -hmm. And it'll tell you then what that weekend price, Friday and Saturday night are. And you do the same thing, find the first Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is usually what I do mm -hmm. and find that and you can get the average weekday price then. And you just kind of go around and look within one to two miles radius yeah of where I mean depending compass. on where you're where you're looking I mean most people if and especially if they're watching this then y'all have looked or booked Airbnb before 
sometimes when you're looking, especially in a metropolitan area or, you know, a high traffic area, I mean, there's tons to choose from, you know? So it's easy to narrow it down and find the area that you're buying in, I would think. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's just a little bit more time consuming because you've got to click we, on each individual and then. And then you've got to you've got to go in and start a reservation. And do you want to do that with every single one around you? No. Yep. You want to go in and find the one that's your same level. Yeah. I mean, so if it's super high end and they're charging, you know, a thousand dollars a night and I mean, it's got a lot of amenities, it's got a pool. And, and yours nice is lemon. more standard, then that is not going to be your comp. Right. Because <laughs> you're not going to get booked over all of these other, like, really luxurious ones. Yep. Again, you got to look at your photos and see how it shows against all of these other properties. Absolutely. So once you've kind of done your due diligence and you've gone in, looked at all of these different ones, then what's your next, what's your next Go to hotels, find the nearest hotel, because you always, you know, people tend to go to, to short-term rentals. Yes, they get more space, they get a kitchen, mm -hmm. that's kind of what they're looking for, right? It's the experience they want. But they also like it because it's cheaper than hotels. And exactly. I know that that's why I got started 20 years ago. Exactly. Renting VRBO. And then, especially when I had kids, traveling mm -hmm. with kids. Traveling with kids and trying to stay in a hotel is a nightmare. It is. So. And, and you want to, you know, a lot of times kids don't want to go out to restaurants. You know, they want you to make them some pasta yeah. or something. And Sandwich you're fine. Or pizza. Yeah. And then we go out to dinner. Y'all sit here and watch TV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what we do. And yeah. So I've always rented short-term rentals, you know, all over Europe. Yep. U.S., anytime we go skiing, always some condo, someplace. But you need to know. You need to know what those hotels are are rated at or the price point is. Right. And I think that's where a lot of Airbnb people tend to forget that that's what they should do as well. I, I feel like that's one of those integral things that, that sets you apart if you're in competition, if you realize that you're in competition with the hotel as well. Um, that's part of the reason why the hotel industry came so hard at Airbnbs, trying to make sure that they were responsible for tax because they knew that was their competition, you know? So you need to keep that in mind when you're trying to price your Airbnb. And most importantly, you want to start low. Yep. Start low on those. I, it's typically I wait, I start like the first month out and I, I take advantage though. They will, they go, Oh, do you want to offer like the first three people who book with you to get an additional 20% off. I always say yes, because that throw, like it puts you on the top of every list and you go out and email blasts. It's a good thing. Yep. If you know anybody is searching for, you know, an Airbnb in my area, I start popping up, you know, my listing will start popping up on their social media. Yep. It's great. Um, when you, I gradually go up after about 90 days. Now, if I'm listing, like, let's say I start my listings in, say, November, mm -hmm. it gets a little harder because January and February, for me, right, because all of my stuff is here in Dallas, well, January and February are our worst months. Yeah. It's kind of me. You know, other than, <laughs> other than, like, other than, like, Valentine's Day weekend or, yeah. you know, that week right around there, other than that, you know, it's just kind of like, yeah, it's hit or miss. And so I tend to keep my prices lower. But then starting in March... They go right back up. Yeah. I mean, then we start to have spring break and all that. And then we're ramping right. up for spring and summer. Well, um, so with the Airbnbs, that we've talked about this before, where in the beginning, when you first list your Airbnb, the other reason why you keep it low is you want people to get in there and you want it booked as much as possible so you can get that rating, so you can get those those um recommendations you can get uh, people commenting you can say you can get your star your badge or what however and, that goes and if people if people view you as a very good buy a very you know going i can't believe we only paid x amount of dollars to and stay here and this. we got all of this and yeah, yeah you know and they're showing off to all their friends you're gonna get a five-star review absolutely and you need three five-star reviews to put your star rating up there so you need that as fast 
as you as possible. possible. Well, and also I find whenever I'm booking, if it's a new Airbnb host, then I tend to shy away because I'm like, oh, well, what if they cancel on me at the last minute? What You don't have those reviews to fall back on to know what kind of host this is because not all hosts are created equal, as right. we know. Um, so the sooner you can get people in there, the sooner you can say, hey, we've had 12 stays, you know, and now we have a rating and we have these reviews that you can look at. It just, it, it just makes it more legit. Well, it's funny because I always forget that, yeah. you know, because, yeah, I'm a real person, but that's a huge, big fear when you're basically booking something from a computer, you've shelled out all this money. Yep. Is it real? Is it not? What if we show up there and... Can't get in. Can't get in. Yep. And th strangely enough, like, I think it's wild that there are still people out there that have never used the Airbnb or VRBO, have never used this type of service. Yeah. So especially for them, it's uber like unnerving to go on those websites pay that money and go fingers crossed i hope i get in <laughs> i hope this isn't a scam you know because right. i remember the first time i did it and i kind of was like uh, i hope this works out and i mean it did which i love i love the vrbo the airbnb yeah. Yeah. all of that um, and I prefer it for so many reasons, like you mentioned, especially when you're traveling with kids or family and keeping everybody in one place, keeping everybody relaxed, but also so that if you are a family, then not everything, and you're thinking economically, we do not have to eat out every single night. We do not have to, you know, we have a place for the kids to just kind of chill and do their own thing. Which is, which is important. It is. So once you put that in, once you decided, okay, this is, this is where I'm going to buy, this is where I'm going to price it, then our next step is processes. I, I probably research processes for about six months to a year. I remember asking you about processes when you first yeah. started this What do you thing. do? And I had everything, I'm like, okay, this is going to be my lock system. Mm -hmm. So I only use August lock systems. Mm -hmm. It's all on one app on my phone. It's great. We don't have problems with it. Um, you know, I have one type of thermostat in all of my properties. So with August, real quick, um, for those who are thinking about it, how much does that cost you? So it's a little bit expensive to get it started up. Mm -hmm. um, about $175, $200, depending on which lock and Wi-Fi system you choose. Mm -hmm. The cameras, like the doorbell cameras, extra. Uh, super fun now because nobody has them mm -hmm. because of shortages. Just super fun. <laughs> super fun. <laughs> like, I can't buy them. Yeah. I can't buy them for this latest, for yeah. one of my latest houses. I just don't have it. Yeah. Um, I've got them, I'm short one. Okay, yeah. so eventually I'm going to find it. I just, it's going to take a while, and it'll probably be on some place like eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Somebody will be selling it, and I'll go pick it up. Um, so those typically will run another $100, mm -hmm. and then there's a keypad, which is $60. Okay, so all in, you're somewhere around 400 400 bucks. Gotcha. So 400 bucks per door? Yes, but you usually only typically put it on one. Mm -hmm. I get another system minus the doorbell, so just like the lock and the keypad mm -hmm. for the maid's closets now. Because those quick set locks and Schlage locks mm -hmm. that are battery operated that you just push the numbers in, those fail. And if it fails... That sounds super fun to Yeah, you. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, it's one thing if you have one, yeah. right? If you have one and you have one cleaning staff, like, you know, one group that cleans it. Yeah. Okay, well, you can give them their own set of keys. When you get to a level where you're you big. You have several. Yeah. And you've got, you don't know specifically who's going to be cleaning it. You have to have it on combination. So, yeah, what I'm finding is the August locks are super easy. If the keypad runs out of batteries, they have access to those batteries. They can change it, and then everything works. Gotcha. Plus, we get updates. We, you know, I'll get updates so to my you phone. Put, uh, now you're starting to put August locks on the maid's closets. Yes. Okay. And so I will just have one door that's the going in and coming out of, like, mm -hmm. to unlock it, which you want anyways because of the security doorbell. Absolutely. So you can see, all right, who's checking in? Who are these people? 
how many people how many people because everybody puts on there okay it's just me and one other person and then you see 15 <laughs> people coming through a door you have no idea <laughs> you're like uh hello uh, it specifically said no parties you and, know. and there have been times where all of a sudden i'll get a call and they're like uh there's a party going on and i'm like okay let me let me call i got this yeah. so i like shut it down but then of course i get on the video right yeah because some of that is entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll record little snippets. Yeah. I'll, I'll download. I'm like, yeah. yeah, look at this one. We're going to download that and send it to all of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say that here. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> and I'm not an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So then you're talking about the front door and then you've got the maid's closet. And that sounds super simple now that yeah. it, with the... Occasionally, I might have, um, on one property, I have a garage mm -hmm. door that you have to come out of, like, and it's separate from the main house. So I have an August lock on that one. Um, this big, huge property that I just finished today, that one has three locks as well because it has an outer door that you go in and then it's the courtyard with a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a, another, another lock one to, to, go. to get into the house. Gotcha. Um, and then we have the maid's closet Got as it. the third. But again, you know. Well, so besides those things that you absolutely need, what uh, the thermostat? Um, is it Nest or what is it exactly? It's Honeywell. Okay. I use Honeywell. So Nest is great, but mm -hmm. you can only have three properties on your app. What? Yeah, you can. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. But I think it's three. That's crazy. Yeah, most of them are like that. Except for one type of thermostat made by Honeywell mm -hmm. where you can have unlimited. So I have all of my properties on one app. Otherwise, I'd have to be logging in and out and going, no. all right, is this on, which account is this thermostat what is, Yeah, on? what is this one connected with? And I mean, we all know yeah. what the trouble is. I mean, just keeping up with passwords and logins and all of that business. Oh. It's, that's a nightmare in itself just for day-to-day -day life. But then if you've got all these properties and you have 15 different logins for a freaking thermostat. So in, in right there, you know, I don't have it on our show notes. Yep. But that's another process. All of my... Um, all of my logins mm -hmm. are the address of the property at Gmail, mm -hmm. and then it's the password is the address of the property, because otherwise I'd be it would be impossible for me to remember everything. Yep. So and I do have like a Google sheet and I've got stuff listed, but you still have to know. Well, and on the fly, and you're dealing with these, especially during high season, you're dealing with these on a regular basis. So All of my Wi-Fi passwords are my cell phone. I don't know that you want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> She's changing it today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but again, it's a good thing to know. I mean, you got to be there, yeah, right? You, you got to be, be at a property. Yeah, but yeah. It, that's a really good thing to do for processes is to make sure that make all... Make it stupid simple. Well, and a cell phone is great because then it's not like, oh, it's an uppercase letter and then it's a lowercase letter. And, and a dash and a dot <laughs> and a, yeah, that's it, miserable. It is miserable because then people have to type all of that in. Yep. Whereas this is pretty easy. I have known certain Airbnb companies that they give certain names, like that one that we did the tour and we called it the Dragon House. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, so they have names like the Beach Fun House or this is the Port Amazing House or this is, you know. When we did our Port Aransas show. Yep. And I, I love that, except how do you know which one, it's not intuitive, which one is the house you're exactly. in. Exactly. Or which one is the neighbor or that neighbor. Yep. Or the FBI surveillance van, which is always <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> well, I like that. So I like keeping it super simple. That's so if you're going to have multiple of these, and ha just always do it the same where you're just changing that little thing. I used to name my properties. I yep. did. And all of them, you know, I think will actually see some screenshots and you know our next episode that we're filming right so where you get to see oh yeah look she named it something there yep. there they are all, i since changed that because i'm like w once you get like five six seven then you're it's like just which easier one is this? yeah and then <laughs> it's not just it's not you having to explain or a spreadsheet the address is that what the address is right like period right um, so it's, it's a heck of a lot easier yeah 
And I mean, all it's cute, but it's right. a heck of a lot, a lot easier with the address. So automating your Airbnb, um, besides like the Nest and... Well, uh, yeah, and, but I mean, that the August, oh. doc, the August door lock system and the, the, thermostat. the thermostat, I can change those anywhere in the world. Nice. So if I'm on vacation in the Caribbean, I can open up my phone and somebody needs to get let in, I can just tap it and it'll unlock. I'll let you in and I've already set the thermostat Stat. at a nice level so it's not hot in the middle of August. Right. Yep. I like it. So as far as making it easy with the laundry of these type of properties, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm assuming that your cleaning staff does the laundry or? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, I, when I first started this, I was like, oh, we can do that. No. No, 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 no. Because then you're, you don't know when you need to, like, be driving there to pick it up. So much easier if the cleaning staff just handles does it. it. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing that, you're talking about, this is a big business. And mm -hmm. the cleaning company I use is a huge company. And so everything has got to be fast. Otherwise, I'm charged extra. Yep. So all of my sheets, if it's a queen size bed, all of those are beige. All of my king size beds, those are dark gray. I don't have full size beds. There you go. I say. rarely have twins, and I don't have a single twin bed right now. Under Very management. Nice. Yeah. So it is, and that is imperative for me. Well, but I mean, that right there tells you, because oh, I mean, all of us, if you don't have an Airbnb yet, I know you've done laundry. Um, we've all done laundry. We've all grabbed the, you know, the whole house has white sheets or whatever. You grab that fitted sheet and, you're, and you realize that it's the wrong size. Give me a break. How many awful. times do you want to do that? Right. Because yeah. it's not just, I mean, you do that once or twice in your day of cleaning and changing beds. You're upset. Yeah, it's Imagine irritating. Imagine doing that. I mean, most of my Airbnbs will have anywhere of like six to eight beds. Imagine having that happen six to eight times, then times five or six houses that yep. you're cleaning in a day, and every day being like that. So yeah, you don't want to be charged extra. You don't want to, so much easier just to do that. Now my towels, I also should say that my, my sheets are colored now because they don't show stains as easily. And you decided to do that um, because I know that's also part of the reason why hotels get do white sheets is so that they can just bleach them if they. You, the cleaning companies are like really big into like yes we want everything to be clean sanitized, mm -hmm. but they're not into using bleach because it like absolutely destroys their machines. Their machines and like the people, it's hazardous to the people using it. I guess hotels don't care. Yep. Um, in the well, they have their own laundry, and they yeah, whatever. They maybe they got the budget for it. Who knows? I yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't I don't know. But I, I even though I was begging them to use bleach and just bleach them, they were just like, eh, we don't use bleach in our. Th I'm like, all right, all right. Colored so, sheets, it is. Colored sheets, it is. And tan and gray, and it really does make everything so much easier. Um, towel setup. I do have white towels. I have white bath towels, white hand towels, but then I have black washcloths. Because why have a cosmetic washcloth as well? Oh, yeah. And it's in an Airbnb, they get stained. Absolutely. And, I mean, spray tan. Spray tan. <laughs> spray I, tan. I have, and I yeah. would love to tell you that spray tan, I mean, what's up with spray tan, right? I will lose. I mean, for an event, I've done spray tans, but I, don't, I just don't. But I do know people that do it on a regular, and it's just never been my bag. It is. It's awful what it does to white, to white towels. towels. It's yeah. awful. Yeah. I mean, they're just gross. I mean, and it, I would love it if they just used the black washcloth because that would not stain that. But white towels, yeah, that's done. So <laughs> doesn't happen so all the time. So whenever you're trying to pick out, like, who your cleaners are or who your lawn care is, especially when you have several properties, so what is it that you... When, when I talk to them? Well, when they have to do a good cleaning job. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved my last cleaner. Mm -hmm. I loved her. I loved the company, you know, it seemed like it was great, but they did a terrible job cleaning. And I just, I let them go for probably six months longer than I should have. 
Now, I remember you telling me about her. I was so stressed. Yeah. I was just like, God, I love her, and I'd love to, like, take her away because I'm sure she'd do a good job if it wasn't this where she company. was, where yeah, she yeah, was yeah. working. But I just had to, you know, finally just fire her and go to a different company. My world is so much better yep. because while I really don't like the guy who owns this personally, mm -hmm. and I don't really ever want to talk to him ever, they do such a good job. So he what, trains them so well. So what did you? How did you go about finding them? Is is it strictly an Airbnb type of? It is. Okay. You have to say I have short term rentals. He was expanding, newly expanding his business mm -hmm. to because he realized, hey, we could make some serious money cleaning yeah. short term rentals if we can do a good job. Um, and he does a phenomenal job. I mean, that's fantastic. I have zero complaints about it. I just you know, bedside yeah. banner is lacking. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's a give and take out I, there. It is. You know, <laughs> I, I don't have to be friends with everybody. Do a good job. You but know. whenever you're, whenever you're like, you got pool issues or you've got lawn or yeah. HVAC, I know we have our own contractors whenever we're doing flips or we're doing, you know, our own house stuff or if we have rentals. You want to have this set but up. But these are all contractors that we need at our fingertips, especially if you've got Airbnbs because this is a constant. You know, it's it's something that I you wouldn't even think of. You need a guy when all of a sudden somebody at your Airbnb does have a huge party and the trash is so huge that it doesn't fit. And I mean, I have one house that we have six garbage cans, six full-size garbage cans and four recycling. So there's like 10 garbage. There's a lot. There's like 10 huge drums out there. Yeah. And we have filled those things completely full and had probably enough to go in two more times from whatever they were throwing there. So I have to have a guy, a trash haul of guy yep. that I call and go, hey, can you get over this property today and take care of all this? And he hauls it all away for me. So as far as those who want to get into Airbnb, what would you say is the list of you have to have? You have to have these people in your, at your fingertips. Cleaners, definitely. Absolutely. Lawn care if you have a lawn to mow. Pool care if you have a pool. Have a have an inexpensive plumber, electrician, and HVAC guy. But then have the emergency 24-7 plumber, HVAC, and repair guy. Um, I also have a really good appliance repair company. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a company. You are going to find that you don't want these single one-off guys. You you know, the, what is it? The Chuck in a truck. Chuck in a truck. <laughs> Chuck in a truck is not really who you're wanting for, because you're running a business. And once you start running a big business, you have to have people answer a call. You have to have them working on weekends, because I guarantee you, anybody out there who's ever rented anything, you know that if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong on a Saturday night. It just <laughs> is. It's going to go wrong Saturday night or Sunday. It's not going to be during the week. It's not going to be nor in normal business hours. It's going to be at night, midnight, and those big companies have the capacity to get somebody out there. They have an emergency crew. And, and that's the whole thing. You, when you're on the fly and you've got a guest and they're, there's something wrong and they're not happy, you need to get somebody out there right away. Yep. And great, you know, if you can wait a day or two from your regular guy, but you need a big company that probably has 50 guys on staff so that they can send somebody out immediately. Yeah. HVAC goes out in Texas in August. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you need somebody out there. <laughs> it was, yeah, absolutely. So as far as, I think that really kind of tells everybody what the what processes you need to put in place and kind of your list of people you need at your fingertips. What would you say as far as analyzing financially uh, this property? So once you get your property up and running, and it's going to take a month or two, mm -hmm. you need to be able to say, what is my daily cost of having this? You should know from, even before you list, what does it cost me to own this property? The, just the pleasure. Basic utilities, uh, mortgage, insurance, property taxes, HOA if there's one. All of those costs need to be added up for the month, divide by 30, 
and that'll tell you what your daily hold is. So that's your minimum number, right? You really you have to hit that. You have to hit that. You don't want to be going below that. You want to be able to profit. Now, obviously, if you're full for the month, and you've got three days and somebody wants, you know, wants it, you know, your break even is 250 a day and they want to rent it at 200 a night. That's up to you if you want to take that extra money. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah, you need to know what the lowest is you can take. So you know where to price it. So you know what your break even point is. And then you also know what you made at the end of the month. You know that during the week, how low can I cut it? Because the weekend is going to make up for it that much. Right. I mean, it's kind of a, a give and take, especially in those off months, because you want to know how much you're making in your high, you know, in the high season so that, you know, the survival of the and two months that you, know, you won't have and, anybody. You know, Airbnbs make, make so much money, I don't uh, ever go below yeah. that minimum. Yeah. But it's, it's still good to know what that minimum is to know, all right, I'm going to price it $50 ahead of that mm -hmm. just for my weekdays. And then let's look at, you know, so that's my base. That's the lowest I'm going to go. Yep. But mm -hmm. let's see where my competition is and what hotels are listing at yep. to know how high I can go or where I should start. Well, I think that's a lot of good advice for everybody watching. If y'all have any questions, because this is just basically telling you what to do to get started. Um, there is a whole series on the Airbnbs that we're going through, and each one has a different nuance about it. So be sure to watch those. But I think that's a ton of information. Just, well, just for getting started. Just for getting started. If y'all have any questions, be sure to drop them or any recommendations that maybe you've come across that you happen to experience that you'd like to share with the rest of us. And don't forget to subscribe and like, um, especially if you like this and you're liking more Airbnbs. That way, every time we have an Airbnb episode, which will hit something specific, you'll get it. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jay Lee Thompson with Texel Real Estate and real estate reformation. And I'm Kristen Gerst with Capricorn Mortgage. Bye, you guys. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.